We meet again, and today we're going to talk about Vladimir Krikunov, possibly the greatest coach of post-Soviet Russia. He's known for his victories and for his candid comments. He won medals at World Championships, he won Russian Super League, he coached Russia at the 2006 Olympics, but his coaching career screeched to a halt in Nizhny Kamsk. Today we'll find out why. It's hard to imagine that this man retired from coaching. Some love him, some despise him, but one thing nobody can deny, he was one of the most picturesque KHL coaches. He's so candid, it hurt him more than a couple of times. Media gave him a hard time, but he remained quite open and frank in his interviews, unlike many others. Even post-game press conferences lighted up when he was around. I believe a real man must be decent and honest, says Krikunov. His hockey career began half a century ago when his aunt from Moscow sent him a gift to Kirova Chepetsk, a pair of hockey skates. Back then Krikunov was more into soccer. He played along with Alexander Maltsev, but then they went separate ways. Back in his playing days Krikunov was a defenseman. He spent his best years with Dynamo Riga. He began his coaching career in Minsk and then improved his skills in Slovenia. Then he won Russian Super League silver medal with Akbars. At the 2002 Olympics he made it to the semi-final with Team Belarus. He won Super League just once, in 2005 with Dynamo Moscow. He was the one who gave a shot at pro hockey to future superstars like Sergei Fedorov, Pavel Datsuk and Mikhail Grabovsky. He knows Nefti Himik well. He knows his players didn't come here for the money. They come to Neftehimik because they've run out of options. This may have changed in the past few seasons a little because Neftehimik has been a very consistent team. This is the reason why some players don't want to live, as was the this is the reason why some players don't want to live, as was the case with Petr Kolkol, even though he had better offers. No matter what team Krikunov joins, it becomes more open to the media. And Akbars was no exception. When Krikunov was in charge, every door was open for public eye, much to displeasure of the management. Same goes for Nizhny Kamsk. Today we're going to show you exclusive footage from Nefti Kimik's Baza. No journalist has ever set foot here before. It's a restricted area in Nizhny Kamsk. It's not as big as Akbar's Baza in Kazan, but it's very cozy and there's everything an athlete could possibly need. They even have the tennis court, a basketball court and a soccer field. There are two blocks where Nefti Himik players get ready for the games. It took the club several years to build this. But the most important thing about this place is that it feels like home. There are a lot of apple trees around, and during winter the players get apple jam which is made right here on site. It's a pretty big park and Nefti Himik players took part in planning it along with the coaching staff. It wasn't that long ago that we didn't have the soccer field or the gym here. Even the pool was built just recently. And this is where we have our team meetings. Some of our players are Christian and some are Muslim, so we have paintings of both religions on the walls. This is where we put our projector. There are even some of my latest drawings left on the board over there. I was telling the guys about Sibir's power play strategies. Here, let me show you. They still score one power play goal on us, but we won the game anyway. Krikunov is very open about his tactical schemes. Most Russian coaches are afraid to reveal their secrets. Krikunov isn't afraid of anything. He's seen it all in hockey. He knows how everybody plays so well, sometimes he doesn't even have to watch their games. 
If I know the coach, I know how his team is going to play. And I know most of the coaches in our league. Hockey coaches rarely change their styles. Take Hanna Yortika, for instance. I learned his game model when he worked with Amor. So when he joined Admiral, I knew what to expect. In terms of recovering techniques, Nefty Kimik is very progressive. Some of their machines you won't be able to find even in Kazan. Moreover, Nefty Kimik may be the only KHL team to have this Japanese machine. Other teams use Chinese machines. It helps the heart work better. Right now it's Oilers prospect Bogdan Yakimov who's using the machine. He's a big and talented kid. But to be a pro hockey player, he had to learn the most important thing of all – how to recover properly. As a coach, your job is to help players improve from game to game and from practice to practice. They need to get better all the time. Every rush has to have a plan B. If plan A doesn't work, you must have another option for the rush. You do that, and a lot of things will go your way. Krikunov may seem like a wise and friendly coach, but his training sessions are legendary enduring. It's a well-known fact around the KHL. On the upside, Neftechimic players are always in perfect physical condition. Krikunov is old school, but it definitely works. Krikunov is also a dictator. He gives every machine in the gym a test drive himself. He's used the same program time and again. He believes his players have to know their drills and number of sets by heart. And no questions must be asked. My job is very simple. I just have to explain to the guys why we do certain things and what is going to happen during the game if they don't listen to me. That's all it is. There's no real secret here. Every team has more or less the same players, but they work for some teams and don't work for the other. Same goes for the drills. Every team has pretty much the same set of drills. It's not what you do, it's how you do it. Well, if the Hemic management expected a better result last season, they were pleased with the consistency of the team. That required a lot of work, but Krikunov knows how to push his players to the limit. I don't give him a lot of time to question my demands. If you don't improve fast enough, you're gonna be cut. I don't have a lot of time to wait around. I also don't believe KHL should use small ice rings. Hockey is better on big ice. You have to do everything faster in small ice. Sure, guys like Datsuk or Malkin can pull this off, because they're magicians. But there are only so few players like them. If KHL goes with small ice, it's gonna hurt the quality of hockey. Krikunov does everything himself during on-ice practices. He gives out the orders, he shows how he wants them to be carried out, and he makes sure players do just that. He's right in the thick of everything. He doesn't speak English, but every import player in the team understands him. Nobody wants to pick a fight with Krikunov. Sometimes players and I have certain conflicts, but I'm never looking for one. If you do what I ask you to do, and don't party hard during the season, there won't be any problem. But if a player spends the nights in a town and doesn't work hard at practices, what does he expect? I have to do something. He's a very demanding coach. He knows exactly what he wants, says Andrei Taratuchin. And make no mistake, his system works. He's always first to tell you about your mistakes, and he rarely compliments us. This is why his compliments are so dear. I've had a long hockey life. I've been around for almost 30 years now. This is why I'm never looking for a conflict. I grew tired of them already. I've had my share when I was young. They say that young coaches these days are tougher than me. I don't know. I belong to a different generation. But I'm pretty sure when I was a young coach, I was way tougher on my players. Krikunov is still interested in being in hockey. Everything is new to him. New players, new coaches and a new league. He likes playing against big clubs most. Clubs that have bigger budgets but less experienced coaches. That's the kind of situation where he has nothing to lose. He's been friends with Valery Belousov since 1976. They shared the same room when they play for the national team. Two years ago, Krikunov and Boris almost knocked out Belousov and Traktor from the playoffs. Traktor got an upper hand after Boris lost both their goalies. 
Otherwise, the different team might have been in the Gagarin Cup finals that year. Great experience, great self-esteem, and the ability to make a timely decision that would turn the game around. He lives alone in Nizhny Kamsk. His wife stopped traveling around with him a long time ago. It's not easy to go from one town to another every other year. He has a pretty big place in Nizhny Kamsk. When he coached Boris, some Niftychimic players asked him to sell this apartment to them. There is no better place to stay in Nizhny Kamsk than this. I like this place. It's not too shabby. He never rented out this apartment. He came back to Nizhny Kamsk from Astana but got fired mid-season. Nevertheless, he's still involved with Neftehimik. Vladimir Krikonov is now the club's vice president. He hasn't said his last word yet. I want Neftehimik one day to win at least a medal. I want to win many medals for this town, but you gotta start somewhere. I've done a lot for this town and I think it deserves at least a medal. It would mean a world to me. It would be a great finish to my career. I want these people to have something to remember me by.